charismatic church. We see so much power. And maybe that is what all of you see. But I see so much danger. And so much self-destruction. So much dissipation of confidence. More and more the congregation and the public is losing confidence in us. They are losing confidence in men of God, in clergymen. If you call yourself a prophet, it's almost like a title meaning con man. How can we take such a sacred title that Isaiah had, that Jeremiah had, that Ezekiel had, that Daniel had, all of these great people? We have so commoditized it and so cheapened it that now this noble title almost means a con man. Because there's no regulatory body. Everybody picks titles as they want and parade with it. When I was growing up, if somebody was a bishop, we believed that they were a no, noble person in the clergy. Because the churches which had bishops in Ghana were two, mainly. The Catholic Church and the Anglican Church. And their bishopric was based on the diocesan system. The Catholic Church, as far as I can remember when I was growing up, had I think about six or so dioceses in, in Ghana. So six bishops. The Anglican church had similar, probably less. Maybe six bishops. Later the Catholic church expanded its dioceses. I think now they have probably about 20 something dioceses in, in Ghana. About 20 something or whatever bishops. Anglican church similar. Then Charismatics and Pentecostals say we won't spoil there. <laughs> We take whatever is noble, apostle. We have made apostle cheap. We've made prophet cheap. Then we say, bishop, now it's your turn. And we have desecrated it so that the title bishop has no nobility attached to it again. Can you imagine in Ghana where everybody who has never been to law school is called a lawyer? I get up and say, hey, I'm a lawyer. From today, I'm lawyer, so and so and so. I'm architect so and so, I'm doctor so and so. Can you imagine what will happen to the health profession? Or the legal profession? We've taken the noble characters, the noble titles, the noble offices that people toiled for to build value and integrity for. Charismatics attack it and dissipate it. You know, the Catholics, they don't marry. The, their, their, their wife is the church. They are married to the church forever. So the church is always on their heart. You, your wife is on your heart. So the, the thing you are wearing itself, its significance is lost on you. So, so he's wearing all of this. I said, why are you doing this? Have you church, studied church history? Do you understand where clergy garments came from? Do you understand why they do so and so? Do you understand why they hold this and all of that and all? Does it work with your own theology as a Pentecostal? Is it consistent? You say, hey, my brother, this thing to open doors. It will open doors. That, you know, because our society is unregulated, the media too, the media just use titles by heart. A herbalist is a doctor. And all kinds of people. So, they, they don't even discern and help to correct the mistakes of the society. They amplify it. So, at this point in time, Pastor Eastwood, I don't know. When I look into the future of charismatism, I see self-destruction. You know, it's one thing I like about the Catholic and the Anglican church. Because the pastors, the clergy, they are learned to han handle, they are trained to handle confidential information. Because people go for confession. And they tell the priest stuff. And the priest has to handle that information. Confidential. If it was charismatics and people did confession. 
We'll have prayer topics. We'll have prayer topics. We have preaching topics. We have uh, insinuation topics. <laughs> we, have, we have control, manipulation. Remember the thing you told me? Remember the thing you told me? If I tell your wife right now, come and sow seed. <laughs> Thank God nobody comes from confession to charismatics. You have to learn to handle confidential information. And what God shows you is confidential information. But we blast it. Sometimes humiliate people in public. The Lord showed me this about you. And we describe people's health challenges publicly. Embarrassing situations that they wish nobody hears. God told you about it. And you feel that the best way is to announce it publicly. The sad thing is even after we have publicly disgraced them. There is no healing. The Pentecostal charismatic church is on a one-way highway drive to self-destruction and it's because generations after generations are using the example of the previous generation as theirs they like they are like the man who prayed with a cat and generations come and think the cat is more important than their prayer if you are a pastor here go to school. If you sense God has called you, you have to go to seminary.